This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armies Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And on this episode, we've finally broken Jonathan by showing him the madcap guns of the Time Splitters franchise. This is some unholy, cursed agglomeration of a Desert Eagle and a Beretta. Basically, it's like a Desert Eagle has been shoved up a Beretta 92, which is uh, not a happy experience for anyone concerned, frankly. So, uh, good job, guys. You've beaten me. If there are any other games, guns, or mechanics that you guys want to see Jonathan break down, let us know in the comment section below. Make sure to subscribe for more videos like this one, and if you'd like to help out the Royal Armies Museum and continue to support Jonathan's work, check out the links in the description of this video. Right, over to Jonathan. Well, this is an interesting one. It looks an awful lot like a Luger, but it's like it's got some sort of additional barrel shroud thing on it that makes it look a lot more advanced. But it even has an animated toggle lock on the top of it. It's animated far too slowly. The barrel is recoiling and the toggle is flipping far too slowly. It's like it's on slow motion, but that's not uncommon in games. I noticed that they have actually got the cartridge cases ejecting out of the top of the pistol, which is nice. Although they haven't stayed very faithful to the Luger design, they have reflected how it actually operates with the toggle lock and the vertical ejection. Clearly this is a time travel based game, so we are in the past. I don't know if this is meant to be some futuristic gun based on the Luger that we brought with us, or if this is meant to be what a Luger looks like in this universe. Maybe it's a bit of both, maybe it's meant to pass as a weapon of the period. But a Luger with a silencer on it does not fit the 1920s, 1930s, whatever this is supposed to be, but it does fit the 1940s. Behold, the Luger with a silencer on it, or a suppressor if you're pedantic. And I am, but it depends which mood I'm in. So this is one of a number of Lugas that was produced for Special Operations Executive, the British equivalent of the OSS. And it's a standard uh, DWM 9mm Luger that's had the barrel threaded for a Parker Hale sound suppressor, which has a little bead front sight set into the, the body. So yeah, there is actually a period precedent that I very much doubt the developers of this game were aware of for a silenced Luger. It doesn't, it even looks quite similar. If you were able to fill this bit in with some sort of shroud, we would have the time splitters gun. So I think that's quite fun. There's a lot to take in here. The gun itself is pretty close to an AK, but not quite right. We've got some strange lumps on the side of the gun. It's mirrored, so it's a left-handed gun, but broadly it is an AK or an AKS, except that it has this amusing wire, folding wire stock, which has, it has big lugs on the gun that don't exist on the real AK, stopping it from up folding up and over. Um, and in fact, the cocking handle would also stop it from folding up and over the gun as well. And because it's a, a U-shaped bit of wire over the top of the gun, it couldn't underfold either. So there's, there's actually no way to deploy this stock. The grenade launcher is a little bit half-life in that it's sort of an afterthought couple of tubes stuck to the, the bottom of the handguard. So I knew, I knew there was something similar coming up, so I grabbed something similar from our collection. Now this is a Polish PMK MS which is the Polish copy of the AKMS. Now this has the opposite stock problem to the Time Splitters rifle in that its normal AK underfolding stock can't be folded because of the grenade launcher. So a very different design to the M203 lookalike that's on this AK, but it's, it's a real world equivalent of what we're seeing in the game. Interesting take on the minigun. I couldn't help noticing the red and white candy stripe portion on the rear of the, of the gun. I'm not really sure what that's about. The feed and ejection on the same side of the gun. So you've got a shoot of rounds going up into the gun and then immediately reversing after being fired and shoot, uh, shooting out the left side, presumably so that you can see more of what's going on with the fun animations. That's not how a minigun works. Minigun's, as you would have seen, the, 
classic scene from the matrix with the helicopter the empty cases drop from the bottom of the gun so it's uh, some liberties taken there with the minigun design well across the board really it doesn't really look like a minigun in detail something a bit different i think at a couple of points we've got the barrels just spinning without firing and i've played at least one game where you can spool up the gun with one button and fire it with another so i don't know if that's what was happening there it didn't seem like it was just a normal delay it's like just just spinning away. It's kind of an interesting one because the, the delay in firing with a minigun in, a, in games is basically artificial in the first place. Miniguns, yes, they sort of spool up in that they have to reach the first firing position, but they do that almost instantly and that's it. It's a gameplay mechanic to begin with to make the thing more cumbersome to use that you have to sort of think ahead of when you need to press the trigger. So to have a, a way to shortcut that is kind of funny really that there's a gameplay way to remove the gameplay mechanic. So this, this is extremely reminiscent of the WA-2000. It's got similar muzzle device, similar barrel support, similar architecture, square, blocky design, wooden furniture, uncommon on a modern sniper rifle, even in the 70s when this was designed. They've somehow made it less of a bullpup. So I think it's technically, I think it technically still would be one in that the trigger is, is just about in front of wherever the breach is on this thing, but it is not nearly so clearly a ballpark, if that makes sense. Uh, the scope is a little bizarre in that it looks like a conventional scope for the most part, but then when you actually use the scope, it's like this weird rectangular thermal looking reticle scope view thing. It doesn't quite seem to jibe with how it's depicted on the gun itself. And clearly with with some strong golden eye heritage behind it, we are for some reason wielding a sniper rifle one-handed. Even though, from an external view, almost certainly, just like golden eye, you would be holding it with both hands. Some weird quirk of, of graphics engine or limitations of the time, meaning that from first person you are ostensibly one one-handed wielding, but actually you're not, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to shoot. <laughs> This is quite an intriguing one, I think. It, it's a riff on on the pulse rifle from Aliens. It's green, it's got the big grooved carrying handle on it with the sort of launcher looking section underneath. And there are, there are some sort of pink plasma charges that you can use um, as like an alt fire. It's more like a combination of the pulse rifle and the plasma rifle from Terminator. And interestingly, and we see from the, the um, HUD indicator, it not only overheats, but speeds up its own rate of fire in a sort of curve the more you hold down the trigger. So you get more effect, more firepower, but you, you have to walk a line of more firepower, but your gun's going to stop if you push it too hard. Or you just push it too hard, let it cool down and shoot again, which is probably what I would do. Which is interesting. I've not seen that take on an energy weapon overheating before. But we also do have ammunition, so it isn't just the straightforward heating up of an energy-based weapon. It is more like the Doom Plasma Rifle where you have ammo. It is like a riff on the Pulse Rifle, but it's, it's pretty far from the tree in, in design terms. Ah! Quite a heavy duty looking grenade launcher here. Quite an interesting design too. Looks an awful lot like they've taken their textures for the rounds are actual an actual round of what looks to be 303 i'm pretty sure i can see 0.303 on the case head and i think the other markings are probably consistent with 303 british as well which is quite funny so that would be a rimmed rifle cartridge not a grenade launcher round but for visual texture i'm pretty sure i can even see the staked primer of a, of a wartime 303 round and what looks like the war department arrow as well so that's a bizarre bit of firearms history buried in this console game. As to how it works, anyone's guess really, some sort of recoil operation going on, a great big bolt assembly is coming back. Not really sure why, because it's a rotary, it's a revolver type weapon, 
all you need is a firing mechanism to fire each round and then the magazine system or the feed mechanism rotates to the next shot so I don't know why you would need a big artillery style breach but it does look cool the rounds look like they would fall out if you aimed this thing upward at all. You'll notice most most drum magazines, most revolvers have some way of mechanically preventing rounds from just falling out of the cylinder, and this doesn't have that, so that we can see those textures in all of their glory. It looks like a, a fun video game grenade launcher, not based on anything in particular, but it is its own design. Right, now I'm getting major GoldenEye vibes from the dual-wheeled P90s. We've got some an excessively high magazine capacity. The P90 is 50 rounds. This is over 60 by the look of it. We're sufficiently early that the rounds aren't being animated. They're just a static texture. That's fair enough. It has got some sort of weird futuristic thermal optic thing on it. And then it's got some sort of light laser unit on the right-hand side. Now, the, there's a version of the P90 that does allow that. This isn't it. Otherwise, it is not a bad representation of a P90, much better than GoldenEyes was several years before this. And it's got the right kind of rate of fire, actually. The P90 does, does hum. <laughs> However, we have got some rather tiny cartridge cases that are smaller than the cartridges that are depicted in the magazine that are flying out of the left side of the gun. Now, those should be dropping out of the bottom of the gun if this was a P90. <laughs> Right, we've uh, moved into the future now, appropriately enough. This is clearly a, a different game in the franchise with better graphics. Just vaguely reminiscent of a P90 is this assault rifle thing. So it has another sort of non-functional, futuristic looking optic on top of it. It's moved very far from the P90 design, but it's recognizably similar to the Time Splitters 2 take on the P90. So in, in design terms, that's quite interesting. Um, it reminds me of something from one of the later Deus Ex games, the way you open up the gun and remove the magazine like it's a coffee machine or something, <laughs> you're replacing the, the water tank, uh, which I guess fits that sort of mass-produced product idea of a, of a futuristic gun. It's got the very high rate of fire and the weird high-pitched report of a sci-fi gun as well. So though it's ostensibly firing cased ammunition, for some reason it sounds different and has a very high rate of fire but is controllable. And who knows what technology might exist in the future to control recoil. We're going to need it if we're going to go for these super high pressure rounds that um, the United States are currently looking at. <laughs> Well, that was truly bizarre. I don't quite know what to make of that, except it's some kind of folding, compact design that, that opens out into a gun. It's got a super high rate of fire and that futuristic firing sound effect. It's literally got monkey written on the side of it and what appears to be a representation of a monkey in the sight, which is, a, as per usual, non-functional. You can't use it for anything. Just as well, really. I'm not sure how you'd aim using a cartoon monkey. So they seem to have gone with this and the other future assault rifle. They seem to be going for very high capacity and very high rate of fire, but then reload times have gone up over modern firearms. You can reload a modern assault rifle in a matter of a second. These, not so much. They've been re-engineered for the game, effectively, to make them slower to reload for gameplay reasons. Oh, yeah. This is another fascinating weapon that I'm still trying to puzzle out. So it's um, a kind of a diesel punk take on a crossbow, really. It's got a drum, some sort of drum magazine. What I can't tell is how and where the harpoons are feeding from. When you hit something with them, they're big, chunky, arrow-like projectiles, but they I don't see where those live on the gun. We've got a set of cogs on there, which are, which are fun, and I guess the idea is some sort of explosive charge is causing a bolt to recoil, and then the, the sort of rack and pinion is driving the magazine to turn it to the next shot. The fun thing about that as an idea is that it has the gameplay mechanic of recoverable ammunition. So you can literally run up to the zombie you just turned into a pincushion and pick up one or more of the, of the rounds so that even if you're out of ammo, you're not out of ammo. 
There goes the gate! Here they come! Let's get up! So at first glance, this thing looks like some sort of homemade, craft-produced submachine gun. It looks like it could function, but it's a kind of a bit over-designed, as a lot of um, fictional video game guns are. There's a lot of, there are a lot of design features there that wouldn't do anything other than look cool. Extra interesting is the fact that this is firing rifle grenades from its muzzle, which is something I don't think I've ever seen done in a game. Now, firing rifle grenades off a submachine gun is not and it's something that anyone has ever done, unless you count the under-barrel launchers that exist for things like the MP5. And yes, they do exist. We have one. Uh, a submachine gun is too small and light to effectively allow you to launch a grenade like this. Although some versions of it you can fire from the shoulder, typically it requires a, a for a big chunky heavy rifle and you need to put the butt into the ground and fire at an angle and let the ground take the recoil. This thing just, we're just taking it with our arm muscles. But it's a, it, very interesting to see a version of a rifle grenade in such a far-fetched video game. The flare gun is pretty close to the First World War single barrel Luftwaffe signal pistol, flare gun, whatever you want to call it, which actually did have as an option grenade rounds, which is what we're seeing here. I mean, the, the shot where it sets someone on fire is closer to a standard flare round, although that isn't really how they work. Being designed to create a, a bright light up in the sky, they just, if they did go far enough into you to stay there, they would just burn whatever colour they're supposed to burn. They wouldn't set you on fire. But it's quite an interesting game gun in that it's pretty close to a real flare gun, but has a lot of gameplay potential, being single shot but quite effective, which a, a grenade round out of a flare gun would be. Right, so now I'm seeing the ammunition actually doing its intended thing. It sort of spirals off into the sky and bursts into a, well, a bit like a flare, but it doesn't sort of, it's more like a star shell illumination flare maybe, although it doesn't seem that bright. It's certainly not a standard colored parachute flare or anything like that. Practically speaking, it's a grenade round though. This is very much a legally different Heckler & Koch MP5K, and it's quite different in detail as most of the Time Splitters guns are. Bit of a mishmash. The cocking handle is not your classic HK shape. It's more just a normal round knob. That's quite a deliberate design choice for whatever reason. The front grip looks quite different. In fact, overall, it almost looks a bit like the experimental HK SMG uh, of, the, of the 80s, 90s, but it's mainly MP5K. So when we only had one of them, we're getting a version of the HK slap. When we're dual wielding them, the bolts just go forward on their own, because how else are you going to do it? Interesting little detail, though, at this stage of, of game design. Cartridge cases in midair, which are flying perpendicular to the gun, which is a, a they, they should be flying in an arc, but nonetheless, um, I can see the, the case head and the there is a bit of detail there, including a fired primer. So despite the guns being quite fantasy takes on real guns and then some made up ones, we have got little details like a dented primer on a fired cartridge case. If I was disappointed by the syringe gun from Team Fortress, um, this kind of makes up for it. So we're firing some sort of dart that injects compressed air. There looks to be an air tank on the gun itself. I'm not sure how that helps the darts to inflate targets, but nonetheless, the, the effect on target is that they are injected with an implausible amount of compressed air or gas, and then they burst. It's pretty cool, if a bit grim. As with other weapons in this game, or this series, I'm struggling to imagine how this thing would function. So we've got compressed gas on the gun, for some reason. I think just as a visual indicator of, how the of what the gun is. And then we have a reciprocating bolt, which could mean a magazine in the grip, except the darts look like they must be pretty big, and they'd have to be very big to contain enough compressed gas to actually inflate a person to the point of exploding. It's a fantasy gun. With another guy. Clear. Groovy. 
This is some unholy cursed agglomeration of a Desert Eagle and a Beretta. Basically, it's like a Desert Eagle has been shoved up a Beretta 92, which is uh, not a happy experience for anyone concerned, frankly. Uh, least of all, me watching it. So, uh, good job, guys. You've beaten me. And then it's got a sort of accessory suppressor that has a scope mount built into it, which is all kinds of wrong as well. You need a scope, or any, any optical sight needs to be mounted to something solid that doesn't move. So a detachable part of the gun is not normally a good place to mount an optical sight. Yeah, I, I think I think enough said on that one. Right, pausing I'm pausing right away there to say, what the hell? What a bizarre weapon. This this is vaguely reminiscent of the, the Neo Pup. Or the the um, NTW-20, the South African grenade launcher that has a, a grip unit mounted on the side of it, on the right side of it. This is the other way around, similar arrangement, and then it has a, a curved rocket magazine that wraps around your forearm, and then the front of the gun is basically just a launch platform for the rocket. Might even be plausible to make something like this one day, I don't know. So there's a weird auto loader that grabs a rocket from the effectively box magazine, at the rear and then conveys it in an arc forwards onto the front of the gun where it's ignited and does its thing. Now that's vaguely plausible in that a rocket munition is a, is a weapon in its own right and the thing you shoot it from is just a launch platform. There are guided missiles that are literally just a missile that you stick on a little ramp and launch them. So this is, weirdly enough, one of the more plausible weapons in this game. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. I think that one may have broken my brain. As ever, if you'd like to support the work that we do here at the Royal Armouries, bringing you some interesting things to uh, complement the reviews that I do, we have links in the description for that. We've also got a series of videos on the Royal Armouries YouTube channel and stuff going on on social media, Facebook and Instagram, that you might want to check out as well. And please do come and visit us here in Leeds, down at Fort Nelson or at the Tower of London, if you can. Um, see you again next time. Mm -hmm.